this is your main event for Royal Rumble. I'm curious to see where you guys go from here on out from here to WrestleMania as as that proverbial road to WrestleMania begins at the Rumble. Yeah, I would have rather seen it there, but I get it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna get like Roman Brock five. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and, yeah. and I and I think if Brock Lesnar does retain and he and he still is WWE champion, I think it's gonna leave a lot of questions because it they, I think they're gonna be very ambiguous with the stipulations of the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship. And I think they're going to keep people guessing and asking plenty of questions. Mm -hmm. But when you have Brock Lesnar, you don't have to explain it because Brock Lesnar could carry both titles. He can say, I'm not unifying. I'm not unifying. All the smart marks will tell you, oh, okay, well, they're clearly going to unify the titles in the brand split. It doesn't have to be the way with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar can easily say, no, I just want both belts. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to, like, you don't have to write nothing for that because it's Brock Lesnar. You're like, well, that is something Brock Lesnar would do. Yeah. And, and Brock Lesnar may defend one and he may defend the other. It's kind of like what Seth Rollins was WWE champion and United States champion. Sometimes you put one belt on the line. Sometimes you put the other belt on. It's not like, oh, I, I, since I won both titles, I'm unifying the titles. But you it know? could go that way with Roman, too. Sure. You but know? here's the thing. Mm -hmm. What about the Royal Rumble match itself? Mm -hmm. Is this a throwaway this year? Is it, you know, where does that person stand? Do you... um? J jump the shark and make them get challenged for the title of crown jewel here's here's what's here's what's got me guessing when it comes to the world rumble this year uh-huh it's the wording of their advertising because now what i'm hearing is the winner of the world rumble gets gets a shot at it at the title of their choice yeah and i'm like wait a minute it, it, it that wasn't I, I, now you may be referring to the universal championship or you may be referring to the WWE Championship, but like I said, there's this ambiguous form of advertising when it comes to the event itself that's got me thinking, well, wait a minute. You know, are they going to throw type, some type of curveball? One thing that the WWE tries not to do, even though it doesn't work at the time, they try not to be stagnant. Mm -hmm. They say, okay, we're doing this for the 50th time. L how do we make this year special? How do we use this year's Royal Rumble to accomplish what we're trying to do long term? You know? And sometimes as fans, we don't want to hear that. But the reality is we don't know what their plans are. And sometimes the Royal Rumble helps us dictate what happens next going into WrestleMania, yeah. right? So I think this year's winner, we're going to find out what direction they're going to go in because now it's, it's most likely the winner is going to add another wrinkle to whatever it is they're going to do next because right now you have two of the biggest personalities in all of professional wrestling that don't seem to be moving over anytime soon. They're just two of the hottest things in the business right now. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Like, who's going to beat either one of them? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, who does the WWE see in that light to say, oh, no, nah, we're going to push this guy back here. We're going to put him in this situation. Who are you going to choose to beat Brock Lesnar? Or who are you going to choose to beat Bobby Lashley? It's like, those are the things, all these matches play a factor into where we go next. And I think that's going to be the fun of it, especially for fans like us. We're older. So not only are we going to try to enjoy the event for what it is, but it helps us put these puzzles together that we like to do every year. Yeah. Like, you know, we're familiar with stuff and what part of what makes it fun for our generation and our ages, we like to try to guess what, what's going to happen next. You know what I mean? Oh, let's, let's see if we can put it together. Like it's, it's almost like trying to trying to piece together this bigger puzzle. How, how are we going to shape up? Because that's what gives us these fun conversations. That's what gives us material for our shows. Mm -hmm. What what direction are they going in? Who are they going to push next? Who do they believe in? Who's going to be the next guy? Are they trying to re um, invigorate somebody that's already there, like an AJ Styles, or are they going to try to go with somebody completely new, like a Riddle? Like you just never know. Who who is the guy that they believe in next? Like you, you know, you're like, man, who's who's next in line? Because whoever even attempts to beat Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns is is going to be a made man one way or another. I've always said when Roman Reigns loses the wwe universal championship mm -hmm. i want it to be to someone he one hasn't faced or lost to before so that it makes the moment it makes it bigger right mm -hmm. i think about when hulk hogan lost to warrior it was a big deal because he, they never faced each other right right um even when you know even you know when it's always like that passing of the torch right right when The Rock lost, finally, like his, you know, what we thought would have been his last championship run, it was the Brock Lesnar, the next guy. Mm -hmm. 
That is what I see in Braun Breaker. I want to see, I I said this the other day, (laughs) if if, if I'm booking, Braun Breaker does not lose. I mean, Braun Breaker is the guy that beats Roman at WrestleMania 40. Oh, wow. That's, that's, and, 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 you know, the the pushback I got um, was wrestling fans not going to wait that long, which I understand, right? Mm -hmm. But I was saying, when I look at Roman, and, and, and maybe because, I never thought I would like him. And now I'm like, he's like my favorite wrestler on the planet right now. Outside of, you know, Daniel Bryan is just in a different class of his own. Yeah. Right. You know, but like this current run of Romans, like I've never seen nothing. And he's my favorite. Right. And, and, and it's like everything he touches is gold. And because of the pandemic, he hasn't been able to go into every single city. That's what I think about when these wrestlers, like after post pandemic, has got me thinking, okay. Yeah, we've seen these wrestlers and we've seen them, but every city hasn't seen them. So every city hasn't had an opportunity. Like John Cena, because WWE was running all the time, every city, every city is like, oh, here we go. Cena's still champion. Where there's right. still big cities that haven't seen Roman Reigns as champion. So they haven't had an opportunity to acknowledge, acknowledge him. Yep, probably. I saw where you were going. Yep. <laughs> so that's why I think like this could work. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And that's why I said, but when, when it's time for him to lose, he needs to lose to somebody that he hasn't faced before. I don't want to see him lose to a Drew McIntyre. I don't, I really like, I like the Seth Rollins. I don't want to see him lose to him. You know what I mean? Granted, Rollins could say, well, look, I beat Roman and Brock for the belt twice each. Mm-hmm. That's different. But I don't want to see him lose to Brock. Like, Brock, you got Taker. You don't need Roman too. You don't need the Tribal Chief, right? Mm-hmm. So when I see Braun Breaker, I'm like, okay, this guy's got the character. He's got the pedigree, and he's believable. When he, you look at him in the ring, you yeah, see two people. Absolutely, yeah. That's the thing. You gotta meet that eye test. You, 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 you meet the airport test, right? You right. walk through the airport. You, you probably won't admit it, but for those who don't know, the real Dwayne now is six feet seven. So he walks through the airport. People automatically are like, oh, yo, he's somebody. Who he play for? That's the thing. Mm-hmm. When you see wrestlers, right? The first thing is who's that? Think about you if you're yep. in a store, right? And I remember when I used to work at Best Buy in Owens Mills. Mm-hmm. It was near the Ravens facility. Yeah, I remember that. That was Ra- yeah. Ravens Player Central. <laughs> Bingo. So, and I would say, and, and my coworkers would be like, oh, yeah, I know that's that's a Raven right there. And, you know, football players wear helmets, so you don't always know their faces unless they're a big star. Right. And I said, how you know? They said, yo, just pay attention. They just look bigger than everybody else. You right. know? Like, I saw Jonathan Ogden. Now, obviously, I know who he is, but he's, like, literally... Eh, it, I, the first thing I thought about, this is how you know it's wrestling ingrained in me, was, wow, that's what people must have felt like when they saw Andre the Giant. This guy's just towering over everybody, and no matter where you stay, you can see him over every aisle, right? Now, mm-hmm. Braun Breaker may not be that big, but his physique, his build, and I think he's the best of both worlds of his dad and his uncle. And because of that, that's the reason why I think he's going to go far places. And that is why I am pre-booking him in the main event, the anniversary edition, main event, WrestleMania 40, which if I was the WWE, since you're doing two nights anyway, it would be at Madison Square Garden. No. <laughs> they go to Barclays before they go to Madison. That, that's, they, do Madison they do house shows at Madison Square Garden. I, I, I know. I know. Televised I, specials. I, I, even... <laughs> I, I was pushing there. <laughs> Los Angeles is next year, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, they're they going to always be in stadiums. We know. I, I, I know. I've heard a lot of people say they hate MetLife. Like, they don't, like, a lot of people say they hated MetLife. In Jersey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'm i with you, though. Like, I, I've not heard nobody say, I've heard two, two of the hottest young talent that people say, two of my favorite young guys that I love to watch now is mm-hmm. Braun Breaker and Hook. You know what I mean? Hook. Um, okay. You know what I mean? So like, don't, like I've not heard nothing negative about him. Like I've, everyone's seeing the same thing. Like, oh boy, like this guy has a huge upside. And I, I'm, I'm with you. I can see that. Yeah. Like you, so you, you can get, see it because think about it. Look, look where the Rock was in two years from 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 when he debuted in '96 to where he to, and two years later, it's, it's night and day. Mm-hmm. It didn't take him long. Like, and and that to me is pedigree. That is talent. Like, it's possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's very possible. I mean, look what Vince did with Roman. Mm-hmm. You know, with WrestleMania 29, The Shield makes their debut. At their WrestleMania debut. WrestleMania 31, he's in the main event. Vince sees things before we do, and, and we hate to admit it. 
and I mm-hmm. and I'm I'm the first one to tell you I didn't want nothing to do with Roman. You know what I mean? But the reality is Vince McMahon saw who his next top guy was. And he was right. You know what I mean? It just I didn't see it until the man turned heel. Yeah. But he was right. And I'm okay with it because I'm like, you know what? Vince isn't always right about the the guys that he chooses, but he's not as out of touch as people like to seem to think so. Does he make decisions that make that don't make sense? Sure, all the time. Like we've we've watched a lot of wrestling hearing that and know what works and what doesn't work, what we like and what we don't like, you know? But at the end of the day, you got to go back to asking yourself the question, is Vince really care what I think? Is, is Vince really trying to cater to me on what I'm, mm-hmm. and, and what I want to watch? Like maybe he's going in a different direction, yeah. you know? So when you see Cena on your TV 5,000 times, when you see Roman Reigns win in 2015, I'm like, I, I don't want to see this because Vince is like, well, I'm not really concerned with what you want. Because because there's going to be a kid that's going to keep watching wrestling in six years. He's going to be he's going to go from six to sixteen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I I got to capitalize on that age group, not yours, because the reality is there's a business he has to run. That's fair. You know what I mean? I can't expect I can't expect wrestling to cater to me as I get older, because that I've I'm fall I've fallen from I've gone from one demographic to another as I've gotten older. And my taste in wrestling and what I like has changed. So what? I'm supposed to assume that it's I'm supposed to like every little bit of it? Because when I grew up out of wrestling, wrestling didn't grow up. Wrestling was still for young kids. And they catered to that generation. Right. So I think that's that's overall how we approach anything that we do at this age when we watch professional wrestling. Um, there's an audience out there that loves to argue about why stuff is stupid or that makes sense. Sure, everybody's entitled to their pain, and I, I respect all of it by all means. But man, there's there's too much to enjoy. Uh, there's too much to have fun with to really just. I mean, if this if you don't like something, don't waste your time, you know. Mm-hmm. But to uh, to really, I can admit that I was wrong about a lot of things, you know, and yeah. I can admit that I was wrong about Roman because I just didn't see it. Like you have to convince me, and. Uh, I was wrong about Roman and, and Vince was right. He just saw it before we 